Hey y'all, welcome to another Couch Conversations with me. Fall in love with me, I introduce her to the game and let her thug with me. She be like Bunny and Clyde, she even clutching me. I feel like it's do or die, she give her soul to me, she wanna be close to me. Oh, she say she fuck with me the long way. She say she gon' run my back, I had a long day. She say, baby, I ain't gon' lead you down the wrong way. Okay. So we just gonna hop right into this thing because I be recording these at like 11 at night and I still have yet to figure out why. I think it's cause at nighttime is when my brain be flowing and then in the daytime, I don't never have time. So I usually record them right before I go to bed or whatever. But we gonna make this quick, right? So check it. Um, I got two things for y'all. I want, want to give y'all some advice on two things that I learned and that I know. And these two things, I don't care what you're going through, okay? Because y'all know the Lord put everything on my heart. I don't care what y'all going through. If you just remember and apply these two things, you're going to be all right. I, pr I promise you, you're going to be all right. So those two things are, and I'm going to provide background on my situation and how I applied it and implemented it, but... I was talking to a couple friends and I found myself saying this like often, like recently, over and over to multiple people. And the first thing is, I want to say, it's okay. Let me get close. It's okay to release your emotions. Okay. Release your emotions. Miranda, what do you mean? Well, let me explain. So when we're going through things or we're mad or we're sad, we do this thing, especially women. No, I take that back, especially men. No, y'all not going to be ghetto today. That's what y'all not going to do. Y'all know I live in a hood. Excuse it. But we tend to hold stuff in. And when we hold it in, we hold in not only what we're going through to the point where we don't tell nobody, but we also hold in the emotion. So the sadness, the crying, the anger, the anxiety, the depression, we hold all that in because you have some who have the mentality, which is more so men, well, crying is a, is a sign of weakness or we don't show emotion or I was, you know, taught men don't cry. And with women, we are so strong minded and we have this sense of strength that we won't let ourselves be vulnerable or let ourselves be emotional and cry. Like we literally try to hold it in, especially people who don't cry often. Then it's like they focus so much on crying that they're not focusing on how the cry made them better or what caused the cry. <clears throat> they're too busy fixated on, I, but I never cry. I don't understand why I'm crying. Like I never do this. This ain't, this ain't me. Like I don't do this. I don't do that crying shit. Not doing that crying shit gonna get you fucked up. <laughs> like, not doing that crying shit is what's gonna fuck you up. It is okay to cry. It's okay to be mad. Now, don't don't be my mad where you start fucking shit up and punching holes in the wall. I don't really do that no more, but, you know, I got some anger issues. But it's okay to be mad. It's okay to lash out, like, not at other people. But I do a thing where I'll scream or I'll just like yell or cry, have a breakdown. Like it's okay to cry. If anything, I encourage you to cry. I encourage you to be mad. I encourage you to get that emotion out of you because holding it in is what's going to tear you apart from the inside. Once you release it and let it go, you are going to feel so much better. Like, that's the road to healing. You're never going to get to healing if you don't let that out. You, you got to get it out. Don't worry about feeling weak because you're crying or feeling like you're, you're not in control because you're angry. Like, don't, I'm, I'm too strong for this. I'm, no, baby, you human. <laughs> you human. That's what humans do. Humans have emotions. For a reason. That's the point. Okay. It's called it's called being human. Anybody. I If I ever met somebody who ain't never cried before in their life. 
Some ain't right. Uh, I don't know what's in your genetic makeup, but I feel like you not human. Like, are you a robot? <laughs> because how you ain't never cried at least once in your life? Like, come on. Even as an adult. Like, we all cry as babies, but as an adult? You mean to tell me you ain't never cried before? Bullshit. I call bullshit. It's no way. It's no way. You're human. You're going to go through emotions of love, anger, sadness, anxiety, depression, crying, like all these different emotions you're going to have. You might feel alone. You might feel abandoned. Like I have really bad abandonment issues. I, I have abandonment issues and a lot of that has to do with me losing my dad at a young age and then losing so many people close to like right after that. And all of them were male, were male figures. So, excuse me, what I found myself doing and I didn't realize until I got older was I create this attachment to men, specifically older men. And it's not like a sexual or intimate attachment. It's just kind of like a, it's my soft spot. Like if I meet a decent human being that's an older man and they... Like, for instance, it's a it's a, a person at my job, right? And he's older, like, has kids, like, stuff like that. It's a soft spot there because he is a father. Or, like, say, for instance, all my friends who have dads, I call them dad. Like, because in my mind, that's what you are. Like, I literally attach myself, and it's, I can't control it. It's just a thing that I do. I can't control the issue it's because it stems from my childhood now it's not an unhealthy issue to the point where i'm like depressed or i'm doing crazy stuff it's just i know that i have it because i create a soft spot or i might panic a little bit like i have an older neighbor that could probably be uh i say my grandpa dad grandpa and he told me he was moving now mind you he's been my neighbor for six years he told me he was moving, and I'm like, wait, you leaving me? <laughs> like, where are you going? Wh where are we going? <laughs> like, you not finna just leave me by myself here like this. Like, and it's because I have daddy issues and because I have abandonment issues, so it makes me uncomfortable. I get scared a little bit. Then I have to snap back to reality like, girl, you are not related to them. <laughs> that is not your problem. That's not your life. That's not your issue. But I'm not ashamed to admit that. Um, and it took me a while to figure out exactly what it was. But going back to what I was saying, you have to let that emotion out. That's rule number one. I hate motivational speakers or people who encourage others not to cry. Or they are so on this path where you're going to be okay. You're strong. You can do this. Just stick through it. Like, they focus so much on the strength that they don't validate and point out the fact that it's okay to cry. Like, I'm going to tell you, okay, be angry. You can cry, but just don't stay in that state. Make sure that whatever it is you're getting out is making you stronger versus just keep telling you how strong you are. Keep telling you can get through this. Like, if you tell, baby, cry that out. Get, get that up off your chest. Get that out. If you got to have a full-blown breakdown, do it. Because from somebody who has them, I will tell you it's going to make you feel so much better. Give me some gospel music, Ella May, or Anaya Lamise, the slow version of the songs. And if, by the way, um, if y'all haven't listened to Heart on My Sleeve, uh, Ella May's new album, y'all need to check that out. Y'all need to check that out because it's for show hitting. Like, like, sis is definitely in my life for real. Because it's, it's like, it's giving very much my life. It's giving me. So, I'm very addicted to that album. But I just like LMA as a whole. Um, I put on some music. I might get in there and I might scream. I talk to God. I cry. I be on the flow. I'm talking about just all just dramatic with it. And it makes me feel better when I'm done. <laughs> like, I, whoo, glad I got that out of my system. What's next? <laughs> like, you literally have to get that out. And then the second method is reflect on your past and the things that you have already gone through. Reflect on and remember the things that you have already made it through. Because what that will do is it will remind you 
how strong you are. Because you can literally, I have mantras that I repeat and I talk to myself a lot. So it's literally like, okay, if I made it through this, I know I can make it through this. Or I made it through this, 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 this. I can go all day. So if I can make it through all of that, all of those things, I can make it through this. I, I've come too far by faith. I will not be defeated. I will not be defeated at all. Like literally reflect and tell yourself I've been through worse or I've been through certain things and it will help you get through what you're currently going through. Because a lot of people say don't reflect on the past. No, don't reflect on the trauma of the past. Don't reflect on the negativity part of the past. Reflect on how you got through it. And I'm about to give y'all an example because I y'all know I'm transparent, so I'm gonna bring y'all into my life real quick. So for the past, I want to say a little bit, maybe like the second week of May, up until about two weeks ago, I was in a very dark place. I was in an extremely dark place. I when I tell y'all, I cried damn near every day. Like literally every day. I cry more in a month than I probably have in a couple years because I was crying every day. It was either a little cry, a big cry. I think I had one breakdown. Um, I got really angry a couple times. Like, you know, I didn't lash out or do anything crazy, but Ooh, my bad y'all. My allergies are serious. I cried every day. And I am not the least bit ashamed. <laughs> I am not the least bit ashamed, baby. I got that out. I got it out. Did I like it? No, obviously not because I didn't want to be sad or I didn't want to be in pain. But at the end of the day, it's I was going through a lot. I was tired. Most of it stemmed from me just being so tired. My job is so draining. My job takes everything out of me. It was that trying to do too many things at one time. Like I always do, one day I'm going to learn my lesson that I am not a robot. Trying to do too many things at once. I had this feeling of because I'm a motivator and because I'm so protective, it's like I always have to help people. Like if you, have, if you got something going on or you got a problem or you dealing with something, it's my natural instinct and purpose to help you. And I'll be going through hell, but you never know it because I put myself and my problems on the back burner to help somebody else. And that was taking a toll on me because I literally had these moments where it was like, I'm not superwoman. I am tired of helping everybody else. What about me? And I also had to tell myself, well, bitch, you ain't said nothing to nobody that you're going through something. So how are they supposed to know? Can't nobody help you if you don't say nothing. But naturally, that's just how I process things. And it's because, again, I'm my own motivator. So when I motivate other people, I'm motivating everybody else. Or I'm sorry, I'm motivating myself at the same time. Take, for instance, the video that I did. And if you ain't watched this video, you need to watch this video literally watch it the one where i talked about spiritual connections and i said in the video that the spirit told me to record that video i was lit that was smack dab in the middle of when i was going through a very dark time i kid y'all not i was dark i was driving home still sad as i had been for the past couple weeks and something in me was like record this and it's like my i just instantly switched like the spirit just made me record it but I was recording it for not only me, but everybody else. But the crazy part is, as soon as I stopped recording it, I went back. Because we had this issue where we don't take our own advice. I went back, right back to that darkness. But in that moment, I was serious. I was very authentic because it was literally an assignment given to me. And though I heard myself and I listened to myself... The darkness that I was going through and the pain and the borderline depression I was going through was overpowering what the spirit was trying to tell me at the time. 
So what I did was I cried every day. I got it all out. I journaled. I got to the point where I started carrying my journal with me. Because I usually journal at night. Unless I'm so upset to the point where I can't journal. But I start carrying my journal with me. Or even like getting another one and bringing it with me. Because I have to be careful with my journal when I go to work and stuff. Because if it gets into the wrong hands. Listen him. <laughs> Some people going to be mad. But I had to. And I would randomly. Like if I'm at work and I need a minute. I'd randomly go to the car and just journal. Or like on my lunch break. Just journal. Like what whatever emotion or whatever that's happening at that moment. I had to write it down. Because you have to release it. And whatever way you feel is best. Crying, writing, dancing, singing, talking to yourself. Obviously prayer. In all things, make sure you pray. But you have to release that. You can't hold that in. I promise you it's going to make it worse. You are never going to heal or get past it if you don't hold it in. I mean, if you don't release it. Another thing that I did was I kept telling myself, Miranda. Because remember, I talk to myself. If y'all don't talk to yourself, something ain't right. <laughs> when you start answering yourself, so you might want, you might, you know, have an issue, which is nothing wrong with that. But I talked to myself and I was like, Miranda, now come on. Let's let's think about this. You done you done been through loss. You don't you lost your daddy. And then y'all know Father's Day came, so that was extremely hard. That whole week I was told told the fuck up if anybody said anything about father's day if anybody said anything about being a father i was surrounded by fathers people like what you doing for father's day like all that i couldn't get on social media i'm bad during father's day that whole week leading up to it is bad for me so that just made it even worse um and then there was some other issues going on it was just shit after shit after shit <laughs> it's like it, it was one thing, then it was another thing, then it was another thing, then it was another thing. Like, it just started piling up. And I was like, give me a break, please. But in that moment, I kept telling myself, you've been through loss. You've been through sexual abuse on multiple occasions. Three times. Three times. You've been through depression. You've been through suicide attempts. You've been through being in a psychiatric hospital. You have been through so much. Like I literally had to reflect on all the things that I've been through. <clears throat> My childhood was horrible. Like it was, it's so much trauma there. It's so much trauma there. Like I have been through so much. And if you know my channel and you know my life and you really watch my videos, you know how much I went through. So I kept telling myself, girl, if you can get through all of that, I know you can get through this. I know you can. It's, it's no way this can defeat you when you've been through so heartbreak, relationships, all of that. Like recently in the past it's just you done been through so much and got past it and healed from it that you're going to heal from this too if you can get past that you can get past this so i would literally tell myself like man i got through sexual abuse i got through badass relationships broken hearts family issues mental health issues the loss of my daddy, my grandpa's, my godfather, and my grandma, who was like my whole life. Uh, financial struggles like e motherfucker to the point where, bitch, you couldn't even pay your light bill. Like, are you serious right now? If you can get through all that, then you're going to be all right. This is just another thing you're going to get through. That's what I kept telling myself. And I put emphasis on the abuse part because that was the part that affected me the most. Like, that's obviously, it's, it affected me the most, especially because it happened as a child and as an adult. So, I was like, you know what, if I can heal from that, if I can heal from just being sexually abused in 2020 during COVID, I can get through this. If I can deal with a toxic relationship, I can deal with this. I just kept telling myself that over and over. And... I want to say maybe matter of fact i remember it was june 14th no 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 june 10th i think it was june 10th 
I, that night, I had a, a praise and worship session because I'm the type that I put on music and I just dance around the house. <laughs> like, I just dance around the house. I go from gospel music, but then I switch it up to a little R&B. Might throw a rap song in there, too. You know, sorry, God, I hate to mix the music, but I, it's my thing. I have a whole little process I go through, and then I write, and I kid y'all not, before I went to sleep, I felt good as hell. <laughs> I woke up the next morning happy than a motherfucker. Like, I was so happy. Because I processed all that. I got all the cries out, all the tears out, all the anger out. Hell, I cried so much, I don't even think I can cry no more. Like, that was it. I had cried, overcried myself. But I felt so much better instantly. Like, I just woke up. Like, a whole month of darkness, sadness, pain, crying, anger, it, to the point where I don't talk to people when I'm going through stuff. And mainly, particularly Christian, because I talk to her every day. And so, two ways you know I'm not in in, the, in my right mind or I'm going through something is if I don't talk to Christian and I don't go to Target. And I'm not bullshitting y'all. I love Target that much. If I don't go to Target and I don't talk to Christian, something ain't right. I, I, I didn't say nothing to nobody. I wouldn't answer nobody's calls, no text messages. Phone was on do not disturb. I didn't want to fuck with nobody. I just want everybody to leave me fucking alone. <laughs> like, I was like, please leave me alone. <laughs> like, don't, what do you want? What do you want from me? I ain't got it. Leave me alone. I, I literally put myself in this box and I seclude myself from people because I have to process my own situation and my own emotions. I'm not good with talking to people until I'm ready. And so I had to spend those weeks by myself and cry it out and talk to God and get through it. And then afterwards, now I can talk to my friends because I can actually get it out now to somebody else. And then obviously when I finally talked to Christian, we talked for hours because I had to update her on everything that was going on. So it's like I needed time to process. Take that time to yourself. Process it. But if you need somebody, do not hesitate. Do not hesitate. Just make sure you go to the right person. Get two things. Get them emotions out. Get them cries out. Get that anger out. Get all that out. And reflect on your past trauma or situations that you've made it through. Reflect on the healing. Reflect on the triumph. Reflect on you overcoming. The perseverance. The strength. Focus on that part. Even if you have to tell yourself that. Those two things, you're going to be all right. Because you can ask anybody I motivate. The number one thing I always tell them, get it out, cry. That I haven't cried. I'm trying not to cry. For what? What you trying not to cry for? Trying not to cry for what? <laughs> you better get... You better cry like no other. Get that out. What you holding that in for? Even if you got to force it, you got to get that out. Ain't no trying not to cry. You No, cry. Do it. Now. <laughs> Don't be trying to hold that shit in. No. But that was my, my couch conversation for the night. I don't want to hold y'all too long. Um, I hope it helped somebody because it definitely helped me. I am in a much better place now. I am at peace. Because um, the devil can't have my joy. Permanently. Like, maybe for a little bit. He had me, he had me for a little bit. But then I was like, you got me fucked up. Like, it's no way. <laughs> it's no way. Like, I literally woke up the next day like, I got this. I'm ready to take on the world. And then some things, some situations, it gets to a point where I just don't give a fuck no more. I just have a I don't care attitude because I, and I was talking to my therapist, I was like, I got to a point where I kept asking myself, what can I do about it? Some stuff you can't do nothing about. And if I can't do nothing about it, then what, what am I worried about it for? It already happened. I can't take it back. I can't fix it. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow, not here yet. 
So I got to focus on today. Yesterday is over with. Whatever happened is over with. It's out of my control. I literally can't do anything about it. So what's the point of me worrying about it? I, that's another thing. You can do that as well. You have to realize some stuff you, you just can't control. You can't do nothing about it. So why worry about it? Or if it already happened, it already happened. You can't take it back. And if you can't take it back, then don't dwell on it. All of those things got me through my dark time. And I hope it get, get you through yours if you're going through one. Um, Y'all know I'm always here. Couch Conversations, Um, it goes down. I was trying to figure out what to talk about. And then, of course, the spirit was like, girl, go ahead and tell these people. Like, you good now, so you can go ahead and let that out. Go ahead and help somebody else. If let the spirit lead you was a person, I am she, she is me. So, I will see y'all in the next video. Don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to try to record more Couch Conversations because these are, like, extremely dope, and y'all love them. I've seen the comments. So, until the next one, bye.